The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. One of these days, we're going to make the three-person format stick. But for now, <laughs> we have we have the Omega. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, schedule, scheduling is going to be fun because the holiday season is coming. Hooray. Yeah, that's true. It's so, it's so weird that November is over half over. Yeah. And... And I, I am still on this on, on this tirade that, that is just, you know, it's November, it's not December, shut the fuck up about Christmas. Well, it's funny that you should mention it, because over here, there's no Thanksgiving. Right. So they're already right into Christmas. Yeah. So it's all of my uh, all of my friends back in America who's like, shut up, it hasn't even been Thanksgiving yet. Come over here and say that. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, I can, I can make allowances for, like, other countries that don't yeah. celebrate Thanksgiving. That, that, you know, because I'm not, I'm not a, I could be a prick, but I'm not that much of a prick, if that makes any sense. But, yeah. but over here, we have Thanksgiving. <laughs> Let's do that one instead of let, instead of letting Christmas creep everywhere. I mean, I, I, right before we started recording, I had just finished watching uh, Brad's midnight screening uh, video for uh, Saving Christmas, which, mm -hmm. by the way, somebody, somebody uh, had suggested I go see it. And Steve the Wicked, who lives like, you know, maybe 20, 30 miles away, he's like, yeah, dude, if you do, call me. You're not doing that alone. <laughs> I have to watch that because because of being married to Hagen, I can't stand Kurt Cameron. Uh, I don't blame you. I really don't blame you. I, I have found that there is actually a location around here that is playing within like 50 miles. Oh, dear. And and it's and it's relatively close. Uh, it, and it's in Alabama, <laughs> because of course it's relatively close in Alabama. That's yeah. Don't don't go to Alabama. Nothing good can come of this. Well, I, I I'm already kind of fucked because I live three miles south of Alabama right now. Oh. Literally, they will come and invade. They already have. Alabamans are coming. I don't know. It's Alabamians. Alabamans. Alabama. Alabama. Alabamites. I, I don't know. Sure. I think it's Alabamans. Maybe. If you're from Alabama, write the show. Yes. <laughs> oh, lordy. So, so uh, how was how was your week? Well, it's pretty good. It just started. Um, I start I start my new job tomorrow. Yeah. Which, and which, uh, by the time you guys hear this, she'll have she'll have already well I've done that. Yeah. So so it's like yay. <laughs> And uh, Dragon Age Inquisition comes out, which my brother-in-law pre-ordered for me, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to that. And next week, I'm going to try to do some kind of Thanksgiving dinner next Ooh. weekend for some friends. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I never actually cooked a turkey before on my own, so I mean, I know enough to remove the secret bag of awful that's inside, but... Yeah. Uh, for, those, for those turkeys that have the secret bag of awful, sometimes you just have to remove the awful. Yeah, I mean they're in a little baggie, so you could just whisk them out and yeah. throw them right in the trash, or save them for I don't know practical jokes. Yeah, although I think some people will like eat them, especially down in the south. <laughs> you can. Well, I know my mo what my mother used to do is she used to take them and boil them with spices and I think uh, carrot and celery mm -hmm. and make stock out of it. So you can make stock out of the organs, yeah. and that's perfectly acceptable. But yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, but you know, this is the southern U.S. We will eat pretty much anything, which which makes Never it really weird for me because I am a picky goddamn Never eater. Was... <laughs> yes. Chicken hearts. Chicken hearts and chicken spleens and bladders and everything. Oh dear. Ew! No one eats bladders. Oh, they can't. That's a, you. You have to be making that up. Tell me you're making that up. I I'm making it up here, but it would not surprise me if it was true. Okay. So so yeah. <laughs> Uh, I did want to share uh, one silly thing that I found before we get into the shoutouts. Um, there's a lot of shit going around that people just – if they took five seconds and looked it up, they would find are untrue. Um, one of which is a, a claim that a planet-dissolving dust cloud would wipe out the solar system in December 2014. That is the claim. Where, what, upon what scientific basis is this predicated? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, by the way, it is false. 
for for those who who don't know. Um, don't run up your credit cards just yet. No, no. Unless unless you're gonna run up those credit cards donating to me. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> so so yeah. No 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 no. Don't do that. Don't run up your credit cards just for me. Okay. Don't do it. Uh, but its origins came in mid-September 2005, where a number of puzzled readers wrote to ask about an article they had encountered online. Uh, according to them, according to the item they they had sent Snopes, Earth and our entire solar system along with it was slated to dissolve in 2014 once a newly discovered planet-eating chaos cloud enveloped it. That's not a chaos slated cloud. Slated to, cloud. as though it was like scheduled by somebody. Of course, it's just another one of those world-ending quote-unquote prophecies that have come around, like. Who was it? Pat Robertson or or whoever said that there was going to be like a major terrorist attack back in like 2007, mm -hmm. and it never happened. Mm -hmm. It's like where 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 you at now, Pat? Huh? 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 And then I remember when people were saying the world was going to end in 2003. I, I was a little eh, at first. I remember then... when it was supposed to end back in 2000, back in uh, 1986. Yeah. I was in school, and some some religious person had prophesied it was going to end. And the world didn't end. We just went to lunch. Yeah. That's what happened. Because I was six. Yeah, and I still remember the whole Y2K scare. Mm -hmm. It was like, I remember we were like at a church uh, lock-in that you know that year. <laughs> well, I say church lock-in, but it was really just at the gym at the local uh, Baptist college. And if everything was counting down, and, and I was kind of eh, here and there. But, you know, when midnight hit and nothing happened, it was like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> I, was in, I was in Philly. I was in Philly at Penn's Landing watching the fireworks. And then we got the train back. It was great. We were so drunk. It was amazing. Sweet. Yeah, I couldn't get drunk yet. I was still just in high school. Although one of the girls with us the next morning, she was praying that the world had ended because that's how sick she was. But, you know, what are you going to do? Aw. It was her fault. Yeah, well, that's that's what happens when you get drunk. You run the risk of a hangover. Uh, and you run everything. the risk of ending the world. <laughs> yes. That's how it goes. Oh, uh, yes. But, uh, but no, if, if you get drunk and you want to help – you want to try and avoid hangovers, first drink plenty of water and also bacon sandwiches. I shit you not, it works. I like tried it. Well, I don't, I, I don't was, really get hungover, so I can't really yeah. comment. Yeah, I've been hungover a couple of times because I either didn't drink enough water or whatever. But this, like one of the last times I got actually decided to sit down and get drunk, I, you know, make myself a bacon sandwich, you know, right before I started, and then the next morning I got up, made myself a bacon sandwich, and everything was all right, relatively. I mean, I was well, the thing tired. is that if you're gonna if you're really gonna throw down, you need to plan during the day and eat eat stuff that's like. Like either pretty heavy or pretty carb heavy, mm -hmm. like hours and hours beforehand, because the way that the way that getting drunk works is a lot of a lot of the alcohol is absorbed in your intestine. So if your intestine is full of food, you will be able to drink longer and get less less. Well, you will get less drunk. You know, won't, won't absorb all the way, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Or we'll have like a, a sports drink, like a Gatorade, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about not getting dehydrated. You know, don't drink and drive, kids. Be responsible. Yeah. Yes, please be responsible. Don't, yeah, drinking and driving is not, it's not funny. Uh, but some things that are good, though, are the shout outs for this week. And to kind of make up for uh, my past few weeks of not having any shout outs, I actually have two. Uh, one of which is a uh, reviewer called uh, Rabbit Abby. At least I, I think that's what she goes by. I'm uh, going by her YouTube channel name. Which obviously you can find on YouTube. Uh, she's done like music video reviews, kind of like Todd in the Shadows, except she's not in the shadows. Um, <laughs> and I, we, she and I, we kind of found each other because I think she's one of the admins for uh, the Tick with Tick Secrets blog. Okay. And she she had the idea, you know, on the uh, Tick with Tick forums where I, th I think it was Hagen that started up the whole um, say you know say something positive and negative about the previous poster's work or whatever. That yeah, is that still going? Uh, I assume so. I haven't been on there oh, in a while. She started that thread in like 2010. Yeah, way long damn time ago. <laughs> ah, back and, in the day. Yes, back in our day. And she wanted to carry the idea over to you know people who actually followed the Tiggle Take Secrets Tumblr. Oh, that's cool. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'll, I'll put my name in there. 
And so she gave me some feedback. I gave her some feedback. And I, I do kind of like her videos. I mean, she, she's working she's working with, with with some constraints like like she's having to work with windows movie maker which i i i i, I sympathize with anybody who has had to do that i mean hey i started out having to use that as well it's the devil yes especially because it was at a time when i saw windows movie maker and it had a good like timeline streamline format and i say streamline but a good timeline format where you can actually cut and paste as you need and, and I remember that together. way back in the day, in yeah. like 2006 or something. Mm -hmm. And then at that about that point, there was the new one. What, what, at the time, it was a new one. And it took all that away and just made the timing so much harder. And it was just, what the fuck, Windows? So eventually, I was able to upgrade to Vegas. <laughs> and of Vegas. course, yes. And I've been using Vegas 9 since 2010. So, 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 so if something won't export... Then would it be fair to say that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. All right, I'm done. And now half the okay. audience is groaning. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, but the other shout out I do have is uh, Michelle Stafford. She is a soap actress. She is currently on General Hospital playing Nina Clay. Uh, we do talk about that character a lot on the Port Charlie podcast, and. Michelle Stafford herself. She is an amazing actress. And I think before she came on to General Hospital, she was on The Young and the Restless for, oh, I don't know how many years. Mm -hmm. And she actually has a web series called The Stafford Project, which follows the, you know, which follows around a woman of a soap star just in her daily life, you know, getting, getting out there dating and putting up with pressure from the networks. Like there was one episode where the network wanted her to have more sex in her personal life, so they tried to set it up and Wait, and, what? Yeah. The, the, because rating. How, because oh, ratings. But But how would other people in the world know what you're getting up to in your secret life? Like in the world? No, they have the cameras running. I mean obviously they wouldn't show Oh anything. oh 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 okay. Yeah, All right. Followed. I thought you meant just I I got confused. Yeah, I'm sorry. I probably didn't explain it well enough, but um, but yeah, she she gets in there, and there's like the ninth episode. She goes on this date with a guy, and she gives him just what I think is like one of the most epic rants of the series. Even the even the camera crew that follows her around are like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> it is amazing. But wow. uh, just look up the Stafford Project. S T S T A double F O R D. Um, look that up on YouTube. Check it out. I believe there's the season one DVD is going to be going on sale on November 28th. So uh, keep an eye out for that as well. It is it's a pretty good series. Um, episodes are like maybe about eight to ten minutes long, give or take, on a usual episode. And people who are fans of uh, Thorsten K, who who is who is himself a soap actor, imagine a Scottish Irish man. Demanding somebody, you know, asking somebody if he wants to toss a salad. Mm -hmm. Which, which, if you're I used to him on, if you're used to him on soap operas and everything, that's kind of a little jarring, but it's still amazing. <laughs> it is pretty awesome. But uh, again, uh, the Stafford Project is find it on YouTube. Rabbit Abbey is also on YouTube. Look them both up. Check them out, and tell them I sent you. <laughs> oh, so uh, do you have any shoutouts, Omega? I do actually. Uh, this is for a game. It came out on Steam. On Tuesday, I'm not sure what other um, platform is going to be coming out for, but it's called This War of Mine, and I actually I saw a trailer for it months and months ago. So I like their Facebook page, and it's about the idea of war from a civilian's point of view. Like we're all used to, you know, the the AAA titles where you go in there and beat up some tourists. I tell you what, mm -hmm. and you know, with your big swinging gun erection, but this is war from the other side of it where you're the one that's living in the bombed-out motel down the street trying to figure out how you and the other refugees living there are going to get food this week or who you should trust. And the, the, Check it out. Uh, just They don't have a .com because their, their .com is actually the production company's .com, but Google it, check them out, just watch the trailer. It looks amazing, and if you can, download it on Steam. Yeah, and the name of that game again is? This War of Mine. This War of Mine. Okay, I'll have, mm -hmm. to, I'll have to check it out after this show. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, it sounds really amazing. So. Yeah. Oh, but that that is our shout outs for this week. And now we hit the news. Uh one one bit of thing I I've, I've gotten some some kind of critique on was um 
I, I guess last week's show was kind of most of the same kind of emotion, if if that makes any sense. Like, and I'm and I'm guessing it's like the stories were you know all elicited similar emotions, which they kind of do considering considering uh, America and everything. I'll but, try to have different emotions from you. Yes, <laughs> but like yeah. that was just like what? Fuck you! Oh, it wasn't awesome. That yeah, sucks. Right. <laughs> but uh, but no, and, and I'm figuring that. That I'm gonna try and you know just kind of shake up the stories a little bit, like not have like a week full of mostly God damn it, I want to just blow up the world stories, but you know to have a little bit of each, and and hopefully it'll work out this way. Have some feel good stories. Yes, some feel good stories. Yes. Oh, but uh, this first story is not one of them. Oh, Walmart employees who are organizing as part of our Walmart are promising the. Biggest strikes ever on Black Friday, saying more employees will participate than the previous two years. To Good. which I say yes. Good for them. Do it. I was I was explaining to um, my parents in law about how now like but the whole Black Friday thing, nobody gets it over here. Like why would you go shopping on one day and kill other people for it? Like, we don't understand. Like they'll have sales like the January sales or Boxing Day sales, but it's apparently nothing like that. I was like, yeah, so now there actually will be open – a lot of places will open on Thanksgiving. So people who just have to come into work Thanksgiving because everybody wants to get up at midnight and go buy things. And people over here are just – they're astounded by that. It they, they sounds so crazy to them. Yeah. So good. Good for Walmart. I, I support places that are staying close on Thanksgiving, and I support workers that strike because that's just – you know what? I've been a retail worker, and I had – I was lucky enough to work for a really great company – so, you know, I, fuck Walmart. Yeah, that's what I would say. yeah. That that's the big that's the big thing because they can afford it. It it is pretty much established There's, fact. Isn't that it that like the whole family is like the richest people in the world? At least or something. The, Did I hear that somewhere? At least the richest in the country. You know, you know, in the United States. So fuck that. Yeah, and it's like you guys can pay your workers fifteen dollars an hour, and I've heard arguments from people. Well, well, fast food joint places, retail workers, they they they're only they're mostly high schoolers. It's like no, that's not true anymore. No. That hasn't been true since like the eighties. Yeah, and even if it was, that doesn't mean you get to pay them less just because they're in high school. You pay them the wage that you know get them used to earning that particular wage like here this is the kind of wage you're going to be earning when you get out into the world if you don't go to like to school or get you know a higher education you know and you'll, well, you you know that the minimum wage is something like $14 in Australia mm -hmm. so if you work at McDonald's in Australia you make about $14 an hour and the price of a big mac meal is 1 cent difference yeah it's adjusted for adjusted for US dollars by the way and that's not in Australian dollars it's 1 cent different from here yeah, and and in fact, I think I saw one infographic where the Big Mac was actually cheaper in Australia than it is here. Yeah, we have to. De yeah, it depends on if it's adjusted for U.S. dollars. Yeah, but because I, the Australians do have dollars as well. Yeah, but I but I think both are at at U.S. dollars. I think again, I'm kind of going by memory here. Or like Costco, they pay their people like eleven or twelve dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and they give them health benefits. And so everyone loves working at Costco because they're really great to their employees. So you should shop at Costco, just saying. Yeah, we need Costco around here. I will I will go and, and work for them if, if Costco's the I need shit to. though, because a lot of them have a special um Costco uh gas station nearby mm -hmm. where, you know, if you put your member card in, you can save like twenty to thirty cents off a gallon of gas <laughs> per what the local is. Oh, it's it's great, especially in the summer. Yeah, and and there's a thing in this article, like like near the last paragraphs. While Walmart, some while Walmart, some workers will go on strike. I I think they mean some Walmart workers. Others mm. will be asked to report to work the day beforehand, Thanksgiving. Nearly one million will workers will be asked to report to work on the national holiday to keep the store open all day, with Black Friday shopping deals starting at 6 p.m. The company has admitted that less than half of its workforce makes more than $25,000, but it could easily raise pay by ending stock buybacks or raising the cost of an item, like a DVD, by a penny. This is so wrong. It Walmart is. Walmart is so terrible. It is. And what's really worse is that it, it, it's at least down here All right, in Graceville. We have like one grocery store, and then we have like $2 stores. You know, most of the people, when you want your groceries, you go to the grocery store. It's like it's a piggly wiggly. 
you go mm. there and the price is it's it's overpriced basically you know especially compared to say walmart which is closest one to us is like a 12 mile drive one way and most a lot of people will go there because walmart has better prices never mind the fact that between this piggly wiggly and that walmart both of which are on the same damn highway you pass another piggly wiggly and i don't know how many other local grocery stores in the next city down but we still go to walmart uh it's like god damn it i i think if we i think if everybody in addition to these workers striking made a made a point to say okay you know what well, I'm going to go somewhere else other than Walmart for my groceries. Yeah, the Piggly Wiggly, they're probably scalping people, but you know what? It's not fucking Walmart. And Piggly Wiggly probably pays their employees a decent living wage. Ugh, that's, that's, oh, oh. And because mm. I am a masochist, there there was one Facebook comment that I want, that I want to share here. And, and I want us to rage at, okay? Rage! Yes, we are going to rage. At this one. Um, <clears throat> have to get the proper voice. <clears throat> well, I work at Walmart, and if I don't like the pay, I would go somewhere else. Nobody is forcing anyone to work there. From what I have seen, most young people that come to work there don't want to work and just want a check given to them. Most of them don't last a week when they find out they actually have to work for the check. This is all backed by union thugs, and I hate unions. All they care about is making money for the union leaders. Unions don't care about the workers. Yeah, well, neither do the Waltons. Pretty much. Yeah, and let's see. If you don't like to pay, you would go somewhere else. Okay, good luck to you, buddy. Good luck. Guess what? Maybe, again, maybe that was true in 1985. Yeah. It ain't is... that time. It ain't farm times anymore. We have iPods now. Yeah, we do have the iPods. And you know what? It has been... Oh, about two and a half – no, no. in fact, it's uh, – yeah, yeah, it's been about two years since I lost my driving job because, well, uh, to be honest, of my own stupidity, but haven't been able to secure another day job at all, part-time, seasonal, no matter what. You know, the most money I make is through this, and that's honestly not very much, but, you know, it, it just says how hard it is, and I'm not the only one out there. There are other people that – don't even have my disadvantage of well, last job I had, I was I, I was fired for, you know. They don't have you that know, today, disadvantage. Today I had to go to uh, the job center, down down Lee's Nagelvin, to give papers to get a number so I can be paid legally. Mm -hmm. And so it's amazing. It's this huge building. There was like so and so, like you know, number three seven five. Go to you know desk A, and I was sitting there just in waiting. And this woman was conducting interviews. She's like, okay, so how long have you been out of work? Okay, so you've been a roofer all your life? Okay. And, like, saying, okay, well, you know, I'm going to give your resume to these companies. We'll see what happens. And then, like, kids could come in, you know, like kids of, you know, in their early 20s, you know. And she's like, okay, well, we have a class in IT. Uh, we uh, That's on this day. We have a class in customer service. Uh, do you want to know how to type? Like, really, apparently, if you are out of work, you go to the job center. And they get your skills, or they help you find a job, so you don't have to be on Job Seekers Allowance, which is basically unemployment. Yeah. And I was shocked, because there's just nothing comparable in the states. Yeah, I think I think the closest was the the place in Indiana, you know, Indianapolis. When I I was live I was still up there, you know, like within the first couple of months after losing my job, you know, you had to go over there, you had to take some classes, and the way I the way it sounded to me. They were talking to everybody in the room like it was their first time doing this shit. And to be fair, there probably were some first-timers in there. But it's like I, I just kind of felt a little condescended to because it's like I know this shit. I really do. Well, I know that, that some some states will run programs like that. But there were, there, were, there were guys in there that were in their 40s or 50s. You know, there were there was a young couple that had the one kid in the pushchair and stuff like that. And I was telling my, my mother-in-law, I was like, yeah, if you lose your job, I mean, you can file for unemployment, but that'll eventually run out. Yeah. So if you can't afford COBRA and you have no health insurance, so you're, and if you're out of work long enough, people just won't hire you just because you've been out of work. So yeah, which is now you're bullshit. unemployed, you're unemployable, and you have no health insurance. And she just was speechless. Yeah, that, that is complete bullshit. And and it's just uh, another reason why 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 the, the 
the Patreon thing I'm doing, which is one of the reasons why I really want it to be able to pick up at some point. Because if I'm if I'm at the point to where I'm unemployable now because I haven't been able to find work in two years for whatever reason, whether it's lack of work or just not able to be qualified for certain work, because down here there the, there are jobs down here, but you can only apply so often for certain jobs. So it's like sixty day waiting period before you can apply again. Wow, really? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, you know, so it's just. Yeah, it 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 it's, it feels like it works against me, and I will admit, since I've been down here, my my actual seeking has kind of slowed, you know, may, partially because I've been doing this, partially because it, it it's just so discouraging. To, it's demoralizing. Yeah, that too. So it's like so it's like why the fuck even bother when all you're gonna get is a is a very polite no and a bird finger. So it's like you know. But I still try. I'm not. I'm not going to come on here and say, "Well, I don't ever try." No, I try. It's just slowed down quite a bit. And this is, and just full disclosure here. And that, and the reason why, like you, like you said, demoralizing. Uh, but let's let's go on to something a little, a little uh, different, a little less, uh, a little less ragey, and a little more what the fuck. And by the <laughs> way, take a shot. This is Florida. It's always Florida, isn't it? Yes. A self-proclaimed alligator whisperer who is accused in Florida of harassing the reptiles says he has done nothing wrong. Hal Creetman of Miami Beach is facing multiple charges over his up-close interactions with the creatures. How Darwin is somehow rolling in his grave. Alligator whisperer, I can see many flaws in this plan. Yes. The 51-year-old has posted videos online of himself petting the alligators and even giving one a kiss on the nose. Dude, how the fuck are you still alive? The former chiropractor who calls himself the Halligator... Oh, Jesus. Uh, he was arrested in the Florida Keys on October 29th. Uh, undercover wildlife officials reported seeing him lead guests into the Everglades for encounters with the reptiles. Police also said he began charging tourists $250 to come and see him in the water with the creatures. Creighton faces a... Although, quite honestly, if I saw somebody who was untrained and a former chiropractor saying, I'm going to go with the, in the water with the alligators, I'd pay $250 to watch it, too. Uh, I don't know if I would pay $250. I'd get, get that shit on YouTube. <laughs> I wouldn't pay two fifty for it, but uh, but yeah. See, the thing is, uh, what what is it? What is it? Uh, lead guests to the Everglades for encounters with the reptiles. This being this dude, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have the proper like setup. Yeah, don't you have to have some kind of license for that? You'd have to have a license, or like pay some kind of insurance, or I'm I'm pretty sure something like logistic and legislative is involved there. Yeah, not even that. Just just a barrier between him and the alligator and the guests that pay the two hundred and fifty dollars to come watch him wrestle around and prove Darwin wrong. You know? Or... I think I think I think the most important phrase in the story is former chiropractor. Yeah. Because you know, why did you stop being a chiropractor, dude? That's that shit's some good money. Oh. Uh, but seriously, dude. Ah. Uh. And I'm just imagining because it's it's if it was just him doing the thing and just putting the videos on YouTube, yeah, it's what the fuck, whatever, you know, we can laugh, but but the way he's going about it, bringing the tourists down, like I said, there's probably no barrier. I'm I'm and probably like you know a tourist might not know better. Like some like they see some guy's website, they're like, oh sure, this sounds great. I'm sure this everything will turn out fine. They don't know who's licensed and who's not, you know. Just saying. Yeah. So it's just, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad they got him at this point because it's like, you know, now it's pretty much like, yeah, you're, you're endangering other people, sir. You know, un unless unless I'm wrong and you did erect some kind of a barrier that would keep the other people safe, then yeah, fuck you, dude. Just you don't you don't just go and wrestle with wild alligators. You definitely alligator kiss them on the nose. That's that. a good way to lose part of your face. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't. Although he will, he does acknowledge that his pastime is risky. He does acknowledge that. Yeah, think. Yeah, I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna get bit, but if I do, it's my fault, not the alligators. <laughs> no, that's saying it's aliens. 
but it's aliens. aliens. <laughs> oh yeah, but um, oh god. So we're gonna go one state. Well, for me, it's one state east. To the rest of the state, that's east of me is one state north. I'm talking about Georgia. Georgia. Mm, Georgia. Yes. I'm done. Each... <laughs> Peach. I just can't. I can't hear the name of the state without thinking of it. Yeah, and we're going to have two Georgia stories in a row. This first one, people, you, you, oh, this, this is going to make some people sick. I, I'm going to yeah. warn you now. The next one is going to be relatively lighter. It's a good thing I haven't eaten yet. Yeah. So, uh, Pe Peachtree Corners, Georgia, very stereotypical name. Uh, Georgia police say they've charged a man and his 23-year-old daughter with murder in the starvation death of an infant. Oh, by I heard way, about this. By the way, this is not the worst part. Gwinnett County Police said in it. Well, okay, well, it's among the worst part. Gwinnett County Police said in a news release the man brought his 15-month-old daughter to the hospital, but she was already dead. Police say the infant's appearance led medical personnel to believe she was mistreated. At a motel in Peachtree Corners, where the man was living, police found the infant's mother, a 21-year-old woman weighing only 59 pounds. They also Jeez. found three other children, ages five, three, and three, who appeared to be mal malnourished. This is where people are going to rage and puke with, 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 with full rage. Police say the man fathered one of the three-year-olds with the woman and the, three, and the other three-year-old and five-year-old with his daughter. Uh, uh, no! That's oh! been happening a lot lately because there was that clan that just got arrested down in Australia. Mm -hmm. And there's like having a whole incense, incest clan down there. God damn, why, like, just... why is this happening? Like animals do that, people. We don't do that. Just we don't we don't do that. Well, okay. We 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 are we 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 belong. We are in the animal kingdom, technically. But well, no, I mean like but, there but... are some animal populations that are able to do that, and still survive, okayish. But we're not one of them. Like if you don't spay or neuter your pets. Like, if you have two puppies or two kittens, when they come of age and they're not fixed, they will bone. Yeah. And they will reproduce. And eventually, yeah, the, the puppies and kittens that they give birth to will not be all that healthy. But there are, pop, there are more robust populations that can handle that. We cannot. It's not fair. You produce children with autosomal mutations. That is not right. You yeah, just, no. And they did this twice. That's the, that's the really disturbing part. She had two kids with him. This is this is not biblical. It sounds crime. like like he was an abuser because if he had all these people kit prisoner in a hotel room, maybe she couldn't get out. Yeah, you know, like that that'll happen sometimes. Like a well, what's his face? That guy in Austria, mm -hmm. who kept his daughter prisoner in the basement, and raped her, and she had his children. Yeah, that is just god damn it! What the fuck, people? And, and now the guy and his 23-year-old daughter do face charges including felony and malice murder, cruelty to children, and cruelty to a physically disabled adult. I'm assuming the 21-year-old woman. 21-year-old, I'm guessing. Yeah. Where did she come from? Is she stolen? I have no idea. It, the article doesn't give that much detail about them. It, it's bare bones. It, it, and it's just, dude! You know, okay. You know, you know, you know, having a three-year-old with the twenty-one-year-old woman, fine. That 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 that's fine. Uh, but two kids with your own daughter, what the fuck? That's humans. We don't do that, you guys. No, that's not how we do things around here. And you know what? The only consolation that I can take out of this, because I gotta try and take something positive, or well, otherwise I am going to go and defenestrate myself. Big window right here. I can do it. And it is the fact that the the twenty three year old daughter was eighteen when she had the first kid. That's a good point. Yeah, that that is the only thing. At and, least she wasn't like underagely abused. Yeah. In fact, I think um, let's see, twenty one, twenty nineteen, eighty. In fact, both of them were of legal age when when they had those kids, presumably. But so that's like the only silver lining. Everything else is just what the fuck. You 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 know, dude, you fucking suck. Um. Assuming that your daughter consented to this, you know, what the fuck? If he raped her, that's a whole different story. But if she consented, what the fuck? Uh, just, ooh. Uh. So, we're going to stay in Georgia. 
And there's there's Georgia on my mind. Okay, I'm done. (laughs) I had to finish. There you go. All right. Oh, so this this involves more what the fuckery with children. A Georgia couple busted for burglary have confessed to taking their seven month old tot along with them on the raids. Why does this keep happening too? Keith Sylvester Evans, 35, and his live-in girlfriend, Joanna Lee Raymond, 26, now face additional child cruelty charges, reports Access North Georgia. The Gainesville duo were detained on suspicion of robbing at least four homes in South Hall County. During police questioning, they revealed that they had brought their unsuspecting baby along with them on the alleged crimes. Because burglary is a family event I guess Georgia. maybe they thought that the baby would be kind of like an instant alibi. Like, people be like, oh, we're not up to no good. Look, we have our baby with us. I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. in that case. Okay, this is going to be one of those times. I don't think I've done this in a while. But, it, you know, burglary is wrong. You should not break into other people's houses and steal their shit. You don't do that. But if you must do it, if you, if you if you cannot resist the urge and must do it anyway, don't take your fucking baby along. Get a babysitter. If you're in Georgia. <laughs> you're we couldn't get a sitter. Somebody. Which is pretty sad. It's like you can lie to the babysitter and the babysitter can have plausible deniability. You know, duh. I mean, come on. I can do this They shit said better. they were going to the movies. Yeah. Oh. Does this mean I'm not going to get paid? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, so right now the instant I'd be, is... I'd be pissed if I was hired to babysit, you know, and they were out committing crimes and the police came and said, we arrested them. We're taking the child into custody to Child Protective Services. I'd be like, am I going to get paid? Because my time is valuable. Oh, god damn. It's just... Oh, yeah. Raymond, uh, let's see. Evans, uh, the guy was charged with burglary, child cruelty, possession of methamphetamine, and drug paraphernalia. And he's also accused of violating a state probation warrant. Raymond faces a one count of burglary and second degree child cruelty charges. So, uh, yeah. And, and and as you mentioned, yes, the child is in child protective services, all that good stuff. Uh, and the couple are in custody without a bond, which is good, because uh, we don't need them running around potentially taking their child. Because see, and, and there's another danger part too, because you know it's a field trip. Yeah, it's a field trip. We're gonna go rob this. We're gonna learn about the law. Yes. <laughs> Which, which to kind of, kind of bring a little bit of a serious note to it, though. I mean, I don't, I don't know if Georgia has the Castle Doctrine or whatever, but it is in the South, and you know how people get with their guns in the South and their property. That's true. That's true because I actually do. I know someone in life who, many, many years ago, he lived in a really, really, really bad part of a Southern town, mm-hmm. and a guy came busting into his house. He was high on meth. And ranting and raving, and the guys that my friend was as a former serviceman had his sidearm, shot the guy in the chest, called the police, and said someone intruded my home, and I just shot him. You need to come. So they they didn't arrest him. They did take his gun, performed ballistics. He got it back several months later, and he was not ever charged because, I mean, he felt bad about it, but he, you know, was defending himself. Yeah. But you know, so there's that. But then there's that while you're holding a child. Yeah, that's just. I, I I'm just. I'm just imagining them, you know, if they come across somebody like that and and, and the guy pulls a gun and be like, don't shoot, we have a baby. It's like, babies are not your shield. Not your shield. Yeah, hashtag not your shield. There you go. Not your cheese. Sorry. <laughs> I keep thinking that every time someone says not your shield, I think about cheese. I'm sorry. That's just oh, how it's going to be. Oh, but uh, speaking of, of, of cheese, I don't know how this is going to fit, maybe because of the setting. But, um... But uh, this next one, we're yeah, we're just three and three for kids at this point. An English theme park has barred all single people from entering, just in case they're a pedophile. I heard about this. I'm on a child-free forum, and we've been talking about this. <laughs> Puxton Park, a family-friendly theme park in the coastal town west of London, has a policy of not allowing single men or women through its gates in order to protect children inside. Grandfather Matthew Richards, 54, said he was shocked to be refused admission when he attempted to see a falconry display on Thursday. I was frankly amazed, he told the Western Gazette. He... Who were they showing the falcons to? I don't know. We've taken one like of our what, grandchildren. Like what child says, Mommy, I went to go see the falcons today. All right, you, let's go to the park then. Yay. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm sure there are some kids, but no, not at this point. You know. 
And it's just Ooh, little Lord, little Lord Fauntleroy. I mean, seriously. <laughs> oh. I shall be taken to the park to observe the falcons now. Yes, it is cool. Uh, the park's managing director, Alistair Mead, has defended the rule, which has been in place since it was opened seven years ago. There's a lot of hot. There's a lot in the headlines about pedophiles and things that are going on with children, he told the Western Gazette. We've done our research and, in line with all the other parks, we don't let single men or women in. Okay, what other parks? I, I want to see I, I want to I want to see the numbers on that. I think if I did a survey of 100 of our customers, they would agree that what we are that we are doing the right thing. Mr. Mead said single people could see the falconry by prior appointment. The rule is buried. Is the falcon available? Oh no, I'm sorry. He's actually booked till two. It's two thirty, all right. <laughs> Book an appointment with the fucking falcons. The yeah. fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, he just. The rule is buried in Buxton Park's website under a long list in the prices section. We are sorry, but we are unable to let single men or women with, without children into the park. So, you know, there are a lot of people that that would enjoy watching falcons. Um, you know, I, you know that may. I would enjoy watching Falcons. Yeah, but I guess I can't go, can I? Well, no, Tag. Well, you're not single. Yeah, but I don't. We don't have kids, though. No, but but no, no, no. See, you're not able to let single women or men without children in the park. Cause so oh. so you and Hagen could go, and you would be fine. We could observe the Falcons. Yeah, I could go with Becky, and we would be fine. Uh, you know, and that makes me wonder. Wonder, do we know if if uh. Uh, Uncle Kage is married because I know he loves falcons. I don't think he's married. Yeah, so he can get in. He can get in. This guy, you know, Uncle Kage, Doctor Sam Conway. He's he's like a fucking physicist. He couldn't get in there because oh, he might be a pedophile. No. Uh, well, I, I, I but I, see, I, I I can tell you where this is coming from uh -huh. because in the UK they are bug nuts, bug nuts, paranoid over pedophiles, and you know why? And I'm like, I don't understand why because. They dropped the ball on all the famous people who are actually raping kids. Mm -hmm. You know, looking for there was a there was a, actually if you check out Brass Eye, just Google Brass Eye pedophile. I promise you will end up in a list on YouTube, and it's this very funny, very irreverent kind of mockumentary on catching pedophiles. And Simon Pegg's in one of the in one of the sketches. It's really great. Yeah. But they're they're obsessed with it, which is really funny because all of their famous you know film legends and TV legends have been buggering children for decades. Yeah. It's like, that's... is there anyone famous over here besides Colin Baker, who obviously is pure of the driven snow, who I love? But <laughs> seriously, I'm like, are you got what are you doing over here? What was in the water at the BBC? Jesus. What the hell? What the hell? I mean, and I could understand, you know, I could understand their stance a little bit. You know, yeah, you want to protect the kids. That's fine. That's that's all well and good. But that's why you have increased security. You know, that way single people can come in. Yeah. What if got... like what if like a couple comes in posing as a couple, but really they're secret pedophiles, huh? huh? Yeah. Kind of that... breaks down your little logic then there, doesn't it? That does it. Like, yeah, the the obvious solution just have a little bit more security, install some more cameras, you know, post some more. <laughs> no, guards. There's, CC... there's CCTV fucking everywhere in the UK. That's like the point. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know. So you know, you you. Yeah, you don't need to keep the single people out, cause you know, uh, and 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 I hate. I hate <laughs> really, doing... it was a protest, and they got Beyonce to come and do all the single ladies. <laughs> that would be Put amazing. Put your hands up if you want to go in the park. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and do you know what? When I work, if you it... if you like the park, you should have put a fence around it. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, so. So okay, within you know recently, and we're, we're going to touch on a lot of this on the next constructive deconstruction because um, I know Holly's going to have a lot to say about the topic in general. Holly is going to holler. Yes, Holly is going to holler. Trust me, that that is that is a little bit of a preview. Um, but you spoilers. Heard... <sighs> yeah. I was kidding. Yeah, but uh, you've heard of Julian Blanc, right? Uh, remind me. Okay. Self-proclaimed date coach Julian Blanc. Oh, this guy, the guy that wants to go to Japan and harass people. Yeah, well, you know what? He's canceled his seminar tour in Australia and left the country after officials revoked his visa in light of online protests that highlighted his longtime promotion of abusive behavior against women. In recent months, Blanc, a representative of global dating help company Real Social Dynamics, attained a following of men desperate More for like companionship. More like global rape company. Oh, you see what I did there. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but he t attained a following of men desperate for companionship through his PhD in female attraction, quote unquote. You can't program. do that. No. Then what was his master's in? I don't even know. I smell a rat. Maybe, maybe his, maybe his master's was in ass grabbing. Ass grabbing. Master's in ass. I just have a master's in ass grabbing from Oxford. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Master's in ass grabbing. You know what? That is going. I, I am making that the episode title. <laughs> oh, sensei, teach me your ways. Not yet. You may only grow up a boob. Yes. Oh, but yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Masters in ass grabbing. I know because I saw this thing that a, a friend of mine shared on Facebook and I was like, is this, what? Is this for real? Oh, Jesus Christ. This guy's for real. Yeah. So uh, the dating strategy Blanc touts in his online videos and in-person sessions centered around the use of force and disregard of consent as a means of gaining a woman's attention. You know, because that's what you do. Sounds more like a means of gaining a woman's taser. Yeah. Which, like the business end. Yeah, that and that would not be a good thing. Or the business end of her foot. Pretty much. Yeah, in the, you know, her foot would be like, women, the business like, end of your penis. Guys don't realize it, but like women, we have that like automatic I win button, which is punching guys in the dick. Yeah. Like I've never had to do it, but I've been trained. I know how. Don't yeah. ask me to train. It, it, and it doesn't require much training either. Either. Oh. You know, you just especially like I, because I go around wearing steel toe boots quite frequently, which I think is technically assault with a deadly weapon. Oh shit. <laughs> well, in, in in some states, in some states, not here. Yeah. Where I can get whoever I like. Woo. Yeah. Um. Oh god, just, just what the fuck, dude? All right, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Blanc took things further. Uh, I guess when it talks about his seminar and and everything, um, when he put his words into action through social through a social media campaign hashtag choking girls all around the world, a compilation of graphic photos that show him choking women. Because that's, I mean, of course, any HR. Company is gonna hear that and be like, "Oh, that's probably a euphemism for something." I mean. Yeah, no, I. You know what? I get uncomfortable seeing guys choke a woman in porn, and I and I know she's probably like either acting like she's getting off on it, and and I know it's in like safe conditions and everything. I knew one girl who said she liked that. Yeah. And like, if that's your thing, go for it. That's your thing. But if that's not your thing, no one should be choking you in real life unless it's like they're actually trying to murder you. Yeah. Which shouldn't just... be happening either. Yeah. So a viral YouTube video also follows Blanc as he wrings a Japanese woman's neck and pushing it, pushes it towards his pelvic area during a walk through the streets of Tokyo. Because that's how you do it, right? That's how you get a blowjob. You force it on them. No. Those dating simulator games, they're lying to you. That's not what Japan is really like. People don't just molest other people on the streets. No. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen. Just saying. No, Ray Play is not meant to be a blueprint. Just it it's not. Just no. Oh god, there's just so much more, but we've only got so much time. Uh point is, he he's Australia's like said, fuck you, your visa's revoked, get the fuck out. Good, so go good. Go on go, go Australia. Oh wow. Hmm. Just, just, uh. So a little, a little bit more, a more, definitely more silly. Out of Columbus, Ohio. Ohio. That's three Columbus oh, police. Oh, <laughs> Ohio. Uh, three Columbus police officers were involved in a crash in West Columbus Friday morning. Happened around 7.30 a.m. on Hog Avenue at I-70 West near the Columbus Police Training Academy. Police said three cruisers full of police academy recruits were heading from the training academy to Cooper Stadium for riot training. The cars were traveling in a convoy when the first car stopped short on Hog Avenue just outside the academy. Officer said the second and third cop Hog Avenue. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Officer said the second and third cop car slammed into each other, and according to the CPD, the third driver was ruled at fault. Though no one was injured, thankfully. Hog Avenue was closed for more than an hour due to the crash, but is now back open. The recruits were headed to Cooper Stadium for riot training, which also did not go as planned, as an instructor released tear gas, which drifted over an elementary school. This <laughs> is got to be the plot for the next Police Academy movie, because they're rebooting it. I heard that they were rebooting it. Oh, yeah. That has got to be... It's like... And, and, I, and I read the original story that talked about the tear gas. 
Uh, the tear gas one, the, where Cooper this Stadium poor is. poor kids, like, coughing and choking and crying. I know, it's like, oh no! And the thing is, it was it wasn't, like, any intentional stupidity on the police department's part. They were, you know, they were these, you know, good enough distance away and they had done riot training there before and nothing had happened. What what I think happened was that just the riot, you know, the tear gas just caught a drift, you know, a wind drift or yeah. whatever and it just kind of just floated over there. You know, it, it wasn't intentional. It, Choke it, some children, you know how it goes. Yeah, it's, it's like mother nature saying fuck these children. Fuck them. Oh em. god. No, Mother Nature. Mother Nature is a cruel mistress. This is true. Uh, uh, speaking of fuck these kids, and not in that way. This this is this is just as horrible, but not in that horrible way. Uh, this is out of Philly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I've been all over this because they they they've been having issues. They've been having issues before the election. Yeah. Like when when I left, it was basically. The mayor of Philadelphia was desperately trying to pass a cigarette tax so he could keep the city schools open to open, you know, in September. Yeah. So the a new Phil- and the governor was being a douche about it, but you you cover that. So. Yeah, a Philadelphia Inquirer report on an elementary school struggling to educate its students and missed material hardship hardship begins with a disturbing piece of information. The number couldn't possibly be right, Mark Oslin thought. One hundred sixty. That was the total discretionary budget he was handed as the brand new principal of Anna Lane Lingelbach Elementary, a public school in Germantown. That's all he'd have to pay for a whole year's books, supplies, staff training, after school activities and incidentals, small but important items like postage and pizza parties. The school has since been told it will be receiving $46,000, but the money hasn't arrived yet. For now, the teachers and administrators supply what they can out of their own pockets and make do without resources that are standard at other schools. Lingelbach doesn't have music classes or playground equipment. Republican Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett's handling of education funding was a major issue in his re- recent re-election campaign, which he lost to Democrat Tom Wolf. No big surprise. Yeah. You know, so so at least at least that, you know, Corbett is out of office, thankfully. Yeah, Mayor Nutter was, I mean, he was doing what he could. Mm-hmm. But every everything that the legislature put through, Corbett would veto. Yeah. It was almost like he was trying to put the city schools out of business. Is well, okay. I'm yeah. a little bit biased because I've been, you know, spent the summer listening to the, all these news stories. But yeah, yeah, and it's just, uh, but but of course, according to Tom Corbett and others of his ilk, you know, education shouldn't be free. If you can't afford an education, then you deserve to be stupid and ignorant. Fuck you. Which, you know what? I bet you that ties into all of these Republicans. And, and I'm pretty sure it's Republicans sucking the cock of whoever it is, probably the Cock brothers, that want it, that are wanting to kill net neutrality, you know, because they want to control the flow of, of information, because that's how you control thought. This is why I'm so glad I'm not in this country anymore, or that in your country, you know, I'm not in America yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. And even more, even more bullshit involving schools. Again, take another shot. We're going back to Florida, and this is the last story for this week. From now on, the lowest grade an Orange County secondary student will get for a class is 50. The school board on Tuesday night formalized... That's technically an F anyway, isn't it? I mean, you can't... In my school, you... That's as low as it went. You know, if you failed, you failed. Yeah. It didn't matter by how much you failed, you still failed. Yeah. School board on Tuesday night formalized the year-old practice of eliminating zero grades for middle and high school. It will not affect individual assignments, but at the end of a quarter or semester, no students will have an average grade lower than 50, a failing grade. The decision came despite objections from a group of teachers. I'm against inflating school grades in violation of our contract, said Wendy Doromal, who teaches at Timber Creek High School. This forces teachers to commit academic fraud and sacrifice their professional integrity. This also conflicts with state statutes. But the district officials say the change, which is intended to help students eventually pass who might otherwise give up, complies with a state law that requires an F to span from 0 to 59. 59 doesn't mean that you're passing. We're not moving that goalpost, said board member Daryl Flynn. Jesus Jara, or actually, wait, I think that's Hispanic. Jesus Jara, my apologies there. Uh, the district's deputy superintendent said the move is good for students. It's really giving kids an opportunity who have slipped up in a marking period, he said. With the change, they don't fall so far behind that they can't make it up in an academic year, he said. 
Um, see, here, here is where the flaw logic. I don't, I still don't understand in. this because when I was little, if you failed, you failed. You got an F. Yeah. I mean, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't. Like, if you got a zero on a certain thing, like a teach, like if a teacher caught you cheating, you get a zero on the test. But you, that just meant that you failed. Yeah. You know, like if you couldn't take a test. Or, you know, you had to, had to go out of town for a funeral or something like that. Or you would make up something later, but it was an F was an, an F, you know. It didn't matter the degree of an F, you know. Yeah. Although I can Maybe see, I'm just not understanding. I can see where the degree of an F, like, you know, outside of this system, which, you know, fuck the system. Uh, you know, like when it comes to like your averages or whatever. Because let's say you get like, you know, hundreds and nineties throughout – Let's say half of the time, and then the other half is like, you know, fifties and forties or what have you. That's still going to bring your grade down, but it's not going to bring true. it down as much as a zero. That's true. So I personally think that they should go to like the whole twenty-point ranges. I, I, I want to say other countries have done it this way, but you know, twenty-point ranges like having like nine, you know, like eighty-one to one hundred being an A, and so on down the line and everything. You know, that that would be a lot better, I think. You know, I mean, it's just yeah. I don't. I'm not really sure why the teachers are so angry about it. Yeah, but I think it's. I I think part of it is because you know, like I said, with the average thing, it's like, yeah, you're, you know, yeah, you want your students to do better, and you don't want them to lose. You don't. You don't want them to lose confidence in themselves, and I understand that. I get that, but it's no good lying to them either. I mean, it's like okay, you well, know it's what? It's like if you're, you're lying to them. Like they can do math. I mean, they can find an average. It's one of the first things you do in math. Yeah. Like, you're not telling them, oh, Johnny, don't... I mean, if you failed, you still got an F. I, I don't know. I, I'm, not really un... I'm not really sure why the teachers are upset about it. I mean, yeah. if anyone can help me out with that, let me know, because I think there might be something critical I'm missing at this point. Yeah. So a couple of, a couple of quotes, or, or at least one quote here. Uh, the teachers who spoke at Tuesday's hearing all opposed the change. Rewarding students who put little to no effort into assignments does them a disservice, said Wendy Wing, who teaches special education students at Piedmont Lakes Middle School. Board member Nancy Robinson said she doesn't understand why some teachers oppose shrinking the F range. She described the mindset that grades be used to punish children as that old school mentality. In Lake County, it's common for teachers to round up zeros, but the practice varies from school to school, the district spokesman said last year. When Orange first started its new grading practice, Seminole, Volusia, and Osceola County schools have policies that copy state guidelines. State statute makes 0 to 59 as the official range for an F in public, middle, and high schools, and 0% as the value for an incomplete. 2009 memo to superintendents from the public schools chancellor said districts aren't allowed to raise the floor of an F. So I'm, I'm assuming the floor is the lowest part. Yeah. And by, by raising it well, up to 50, they're kind of going against the law there too. So that's what, it another sounds like, what it sounds like to me is that there's a bit of a disagreement of who this is helping. Yeah. Because the the, the school board is ma as as it's the article states, it, you know, they might have said other things other places. It's kind of making it sound like, you know, this is to help children who might be disadvantaged, but then the teachers are kind of very anti-student. Oh, they'll just they'll just slack off and stuff like that. But if a child is getting is getting grades like that, you have to wonder what's going on. Yeah. You know, are, do they have a learning disability? Is there something going on at home? You know, you know, is is the child dyslexic or is there something that's that's going on there that, you know, besides because I and I have I knew people and I have been that kid. I, I, I could I feel free admitting this. I could not get beyond algebra two mm -hmm. in math. I just I see solve for X and everything just goes to gray. I just couldn't do it. I would do anything else. I just couldn't do that. And so. All, I, I was always told that I was being, just being lazy and I and didn't want to work and stuff like that. And that's got to be horrible for a child who has learning disability. Yeah. And they're trying as hard as they can to have the teacher just tell them, you deserve a zero because you're lazy and horrible. You know, that's that's very callous. Yeah, You know that, that is. Uh, personally, and, and I mentioned it before, I think if you're going to do anything to the grading scale, make it just the 20-point ranges. You know, that way it takes up all 100 points, you know, you have a, a better shot at getting an A, like, you know, if you make an, what is it, what is it, 81 to 100, if mm -hmm. you get an 85, it's still an A, you know, and if you get an F, you have to be pretty much trying to get an F at that point. Yeah. So, you know, if you get an F, then 
that's when they say, okay, is something wrong? Did you just not understand the material? And if everything seems fine and there's no outlying problems or whatever, then you start thinking, okay, is this kid just lazy? That's that you know you get you get through all the other layers first, and then you then you start wondering, okay, there's nothing wrong here. Kid's probably just lazy. Or is there a problem with the teaching style? There is that too. You know, like I just I just got uh, the results uh, back from an exam on uh, on Friday, and I did I did okay. I didn't do as good as I wanted to do, but I still did pretty good. And so the so there were two other people that I'm sorry, three other people that got the same score as me, and only one person got a higher score. Right. And because we're doing statistics, I took the statistics, the statistics version, SPSS, mm-hmm. and I plugged – I spent about an hour doing this. I plugged all of our results because they post the whole results with your ID number so no one knows who gets what right. into SPSS. And the mean, the, mean, the mean score was 49% with a standard deviation of 12. After I there were there were, there were uh, twelve people who didn't sit the exam, so they had zero. So I discounted their zero because that was that was that was an outlier. Mm-hmm. And then I looked at the curves for all or the results for all the other exams, and you had a pretty standard distribution. So what that says to me is not that everyone just got really lazy and decided not to study for this, because obviously that's not true, mm-hmm. but more that this test was not worded in a way that was designed for us to be able to succeed. Yeah. So there, there are a number of things. And again, really right, just for third time, rule of three. And actually so. people are really pissed and they're going to the class reps about it. But <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, but as far as changing the grading scales or whatever, don't just raise the F up to 50 to 59. That's stupid. You know, make it the twenty point thing. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how it works over there. I, I, I they wanna... have this weird thing going on where it's out of seventy points, and you ha- you have to get a first like there's a high first, a first, a low first, a second, a low second. It's very confusing to me. Yeah. If you understand right the show. There you go. But... but yeah, you know the twenty point system that makes sense. You have five letter grades. Why not just give them all twenty points each? That 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 makes sense. Because but... we're resistant to change. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, this is true. This is America. That's had to be Mer- dragged. Drugs kicking and screaming into the 20th century. Pretty much. And now we're going to kick it, drag it kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Someday. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Uh, and of course, the people that, that, that don't want to, they whine and complain and they threaten secession, Texas. Good luck with that. Yeah, have fun. Yeah, yeah. They whine and complain. They th- I mean, no offense if you're from Texas, but that state threatens like every day to secede. It never will because that's a pretty big thing. Like I, I think there may be a process for it, but you need an act of Congress. You know, I mean, you need so much has to happen. That is never going to happen. Yeah, because it's just no. And even if it did happen, yeah, good luck defending your asses from Mexico. Well, Mexico wouldn't invade. <laughs> they got their own problems. Well, well, hey, they may not invade, but they may want to <laughs> be like, oh, the territory. oh my gosh, we've 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 been waiting for a hundred years. Yeah. It's time. Well, just no. no. Well, no, see, see, with all the stuff that's going down in Mexico right now, the people that are in charge down there might be like, hey, that's not a part of America anymore. We could, we could like, increase our territory no, a little bit. Th- oh. th- there would be – no, because, because NATO would get involved. The UN would get involved. What would more likely happen is the quote-unquote country of Texas or whatever it would become would just try to strike their own treaties with the Mexican government, as would be their right. They share a border. Yeah. But I don't I – don't, I can't – no, this – the U- the UN would not allow that to happen, and the United States would not allow that to happen either. Yeah, you know. Uh, well, then again, the last time a bunch of states decided they wanted to form their own country, we had a war over it. Yes, but that was in farm times, you know. Even then, it's like, even then, it's like, yeah. We, we didn't know how life worked. We didn't have penicillin. I mean, just you know. <laughs> uh but with that, we are going to get out of here for this week. We did go over over a little bit, and. and Hello. It, and I have noticed every time I mention we went over a little bit, it's like maybe five minutes. Mm. <laughs> oh, so, um, so yeah, if we wanted to find the Omega on the social media, where could we find her? Oh, Jesus Christ, everywhere. Um, you can find me on the Twitters at the Omega Geek. I have the Omega Geek dot com is my personal web domain. Uh, you can find me at RT Gomer Prod. You can occasionally find my articles on Nerdvice. I should really write a new one. Um, you can find Lesbian Talk on that guy with the glasses dot com, soon to be channelawesome.com, maybe we think so someday. Um, but yeah. 
Yeah. And you can also find Lesbian Talk on rtgomer.com, which is where you can I find said, me as well. I said that. Well, that's your stuff. Well, yeah. You know, both, you know. <laughs> you didn't forget this time. You always you forgot. This time I didn't. No, no you've been good just, about remembering. Just saying. <laughs> Nah, you've been good about remembering. I, I, I am, I, I am a pedantic shit today, apparently. But uh, if you want to find me in my pedantic shitness, then you can find me at rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. Uh, you can find me on the social medias at gomer 21 X. That's Twitter, Tumblr, pretty much anywhere else you can think. And in addition to the spiel that's going to be coming up in the uh, ending bumper, uh, I do have a uh, MacFest fundraiser going on. Uh, it'll be going on until about mid-December at that. At which point, if I don't have the money for it, I'm just going to call it, and whatever money I do raise will just go back into the site or what have you. And and you can find that. Actually, I should be it should be a link below in the uh, video f versions, either on my site or on Nerdvice. Just click there. It should be the uh, MagFest 2015 fund. And if you want to donate or whatever, and we will have another. Uh, 24 hour I'm not going to be a 24 hour fundraiser stream but there will be another fundraiser stream coming up probably a week or two after Thanksgiving um, so if you guys want to come out have some fun I'm going to try and do the whole game show thing again which I've got to say you know you know you know uh, uh, that guy the glasses channel awesome they've been promising a game show for over a year and uh, this is true. I managed to put one together in about three weeks <clears throat> just saying on a $50 budget too just just kind of just saying <laughs> Oh yeah, shots fired. I'm gonna get. Tr I'm. 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 I'm expecting it. It's not like Doug Walker's gonna come like knocking door and be like, "What were you saying about me online?" No. Uh, uh, I think. Yeah, I thought so. What? No. Nah, Cause... Mike Michaud would do that. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> he lives so, like in Illinois, though. Yeah, true. Yeah, that is true. But oh well. No, 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 no. In all, in all seriousness, uh, I'm going to get out of here before I dig myself any deeper. Thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the Omega signing off. Bye-bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash beckyhop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.